let's review factoring, shall we? Okay, so I think I left my note. lot of the first page, the front page. So let's review. Number one, you're just multiplying on this one, you're not actually factoring because it's already factored for you. So that's just your foil, first, outer, inner, last, or your double distribution. So for instance, same thing kind of as we did yesterday, I'm going to take that 3x and I'm going to multiply it here. 3x times 4x, 12x squared, multiply it again to here, 3x times negative 5 is negative 15x. So you should be using a pencil. And then I'm going to distribute the 2. So 2 times 4x is 8x. It lines up with that x. And 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. For a final answer of 12x squared minus 7x so that's just your plain twirling. Most of you are fine with that. And at this point you're in pre-calc, if you are able to do, you know, 15x, negative 15x, and positive 8x in your head, and you're not making sign errors by all means, you're welcome to do that in your head. I don't care. Here, however, the answer to this one is not 25y squared minus or plus 16. This is the biggest error problem that we have in pre-calc when we, we square binomial rot. So you got to quit squaring it that way. Doesn't this mean that I'm taking 5y minus 4 and multiplying it to itself, 5y minus 4? There is a factor pattern to this or a, a multiplication pattern to it. Um, most of you don't know it. But again, if you double distribute, I'm going to take the 5y and multiply it through, you do indeed get 25y squared, but you get a middle term. 5y times negative 4 is negative 20y. Then when you distribute the negative 4, negative 4 times that 5y is another negative 20y. They do not cancel each other out on a square binomial. And then negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. So instead, my answer is, you do have a 25y squared, but most of you will miss that minus 40y plus 16. So you might want to highlight that one because I would say easily 80% of you miss it. That's how bad the error is on that one. What's that pattern? 2x plus 3y, 2x minus 3y. Yeah, this is the pattern that uses, if this were a plus b, this is a minus b. Doesn't it multiply out to give you a squared minus b squared, the difference of two squares? And if you don't believe me, look at your outer term, that's negative 6xy. Your inner term is positive 6xy. That's where they do cancel each other out, unlike here. So if I were you, I would start to recognize that difference of two squares pattern, and all you have to do is take the first term squared and subtract the second term squared. So the first term squared is what? 4x squared minus the 3y squared is what? 9y squared. You shouldn't have to show any work for that one. So there's your difference of two squares. Um, just to let you know the pattern for this one, a squared binomial. That pattern a plus b is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So you could have used that pattern. And then if there's a minus in here, then there's a minus here. So you could have a minus here, and then that would create a minus on that middle term. Some of you know that pattern most of you don't. All right, then we're going to do number four. I'll let you do number five on your own. But this is just a distribution. Um, you can look at it as a double distribution or a triple distribution. I prefer to only distribute twice, so I'm going to distribute backwards. So I'm going to take my x 
and I'm going to multiply it to the x squared, add exponents to the x cubed. I'm going to multiply it to the next one. And remember, coefficient to coefficient, like base to like base. So I've got negative 2 times 1, negative 2, x times x, is x squared. And then uh, x times 3 is just a 3. So your second distribution would be then your 4. So 4 times x squared is 4x squared. It lines up here. And then 4 times a negative 2x is a negative 8x. It lines up here. And then 4 times 3 is positive 12. So if you get in the habit of lining up like terms, because you're going to have some long multiplications in pre-calc, then you're not going to lose like terms. So add down, when you add and combine like terms, the variable string does not change, just add coefficients. So you've got x cubed, subtract and keep the sound larger, so plus 2x squared, subtract, keep the sound larger, minus 5x, and then plus 5. So 5 is the same way, but 5 is a triple distribution, so you would have three rows here, lined up like terms. I'm not doing this one, but what does this look like to you? Isn't it no different than this one? But you're squaring a radical, hint, hint. Uh, so then let's go ahead and start factoring. So that was all multiplication. Now we're going to get down to factoring. So let's start with 8. If you ever had me, I gave you a factoring flowchart. Go by. The very first question you should always ask yourself is there a greatest common factor? No matter whether you can factor this a difference of two squares or whatever, always take out a greatest common factor as it makes your work easier. So is there a GCF here? What is it? Just, just a 5, right? And so whatever you pull out in front, you should be dividing each of those terms by that GCF. So the 5's here cancel, you're left with an X. 15 divided by 5 is minus 3. Do not re-multiply because in the back where you started, that's your answer. 5 times x minus 3. So that's the simple one. What's this? It's a difference of two squares, right? So isn't this how it factors? Because this is a squared minus b squared. So if you have a perfect square minus a perfect square, factor is a plus b a minus b. So here are my binomials with my plus minus in there. What's the square root of x squared? x. So an x goes here and an x goes here. What's the square root of 49? 7. 7. So you have 7 and 7. That's easy. What do I do here first? Well, I'm, I actually, I'm going to let you do that one. Flip it. That one you ought to be able to do. So let's look at number 12. Not the difference of two squares. Is there a GCF? Gross common factor, no gross common factor. So it's just a plain trinomial. So here's how I have taught my students in the past. I know that um, however you want to do this, I don't care, but you need to take your coefficient of what I call your bookends, your first and your last terms. Well, this one is a coefficient of 1. So I would be taking 1 times 14, and pay attention to signs, so that gives you a positive 14, right? Because it's a positive 14, you've done adding the factors of 14. I want to add the factors of 14 to find this middle term that has a sign of positive 9. What factors of 14 add to give you 9? 7 and 2. Now I know that Mrs. Nelson does this x thing. The same thing. I just do a teacher. But I make you, I force you to think about whether you're adding or subtracting. It's important. And so I want a 9. In order to get a positive 9, the bigger of the two factors always carries that same sign. So I know the 7 is positive. What's the 2? It has to be positive also. So you should have learned that if there's a coefficient here of 1, it's a shortcut. You don't have to use group and garbage, but you could use group and garbage. So you don't care for group and garbage? No. 
it means a group of what do you mean? Also, why? The way where it's like the, the, the X is, and then the no, that's what I'm going to do because we're we're on free top, right? You mean this? Yeah. yeah. So you can use a shortcut. I'll show you one with, that you can't use a shortcut in a minute. But anytime that this has a coefficient of one, the X squared becomes an X and an X. And then what you found in your chart or your factor sum chart, whatever you want to call it, is a plus two and a plus seven. Always recoil to double check. You want to check the signs and you want to check your products. And so if you do recoil, this doesn't work out. So there's your problem. Now if you were to do it the long way with group and garbage, you would take your bookends, x squared and positive 14. You would tap on an x to these and you would have a plus 2x and a plus 7x. And then Mrs. Baker likes to call these two of these. So if you had Baker, she did two of these with this, right? You would just cut that in the middle, right there. Uh, that sign actually stays with that term. And then what's the GCF here? X. So I'm going to take that in front, divide each of those by an X. What do you have left? X plus 2. And what's the GCF here? And it's a positive 7, right? So we would divide each of those by a 7. What do you have left? X plus 2. Notice how they're the same. The x plus 2 would be brought out in front, and what's left over goes in the second set of parentheses, x plus 7. So that's the long way. But if you have a coefficient of 1, why go through extra work? Just throw them in the parentheses. All right, so let's look at 15. 15, you still want to ask, is their greatest common factor for all of them? No, nope, because a 20 has no variable in it, right? So you have four terms. Your only choice is to use group and garbage. You need to cut this in half, keeping the sign with the third term. I'm going to do exactly what we just did here. Look at the first two. What is the GCF in the first two? X squared. So I'm going to pull an X squared out in front of parentheses and divide each of these by that greatest common factor of X squared. What's X cubed divided by X squared? X. X squared here cancels, so you have minus 4. What's the GCF in the second group? 5. So I'm going to take out a positive 5. Make sure you put a plus 5 in front of that parenthesis. And then each of these are divided by a 5. What do you have left? X minus 4. What you have left in the parentheses should be the same. If they are not the same, you did something wrong. You either didn't take out the whole GCF or you wrote down something. So now, we, we're not done factoring because we have addition outside of parentheses. So we have to take this. This is one term, and that's one term. This is a factor, that's a factor. This is a factor, and that's a factor. So they, both terms have a factor of x minus 4 in common that you're going to pull out in front of the parentheses. So if I divide this by x minus 4 and divide this by x minus 4, those cancel, right? I have left x squared plus 5. First of all, you cannot factor this x squared plus 5 anymore because although that is a perfect square, 5 is not a perfect square, and furthermore, you don't have a minus sign of each one. Question. You mean if you have x squared plus 5 in front? No. All right, so that's your final answer here. So you're going to practice that. So 16 is just like that. And then we get into some more complicated trinomials. So I'm going to do 17 and 18 with you. Um, and I'm going to teach you using uh, group and garbage. Because we've already gone through two group and garbage problems already. Should start to be sounding familiar. So you want to take your bookends, the numbers on your bookends, in this case the 6 and the positive 1. We're going to multiply those together over here to the side. So 6 times 1 gives you a positive 6. So I want to add the factors of 6. You have to be careful with factors of 6, by the way. And especially when the middle terms are 5. I want to be getting a positive 5. I can subtract the factors of 6 to get 5, and I can add the factors of 6 to get 5. So that's why it's vitally important that you know what you're adding or subtracting. And because the product of those bookends is positive, that's why I know I'm adding to get the factors. 
So the factors of 6, we've got 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. 1 and 6 gives me 7 when I add, and 2 and 3 would be the one that gives me 5 when I add. So I want to be using the 2 and the 3. I know that my 5 needs to be positive, so the bigger of these two carries that same sign. What is the sign of the 2 have to be? It also has to be positive. So I'm going to tack an x onto those, and I'm going to replace that middle term of 5x with a 2x and a 3x. So I'm going to rewrite this, 6x squared. But instead, I'm replacing that 5x with a positive 2x and a positive 3x. That was the purpose of our factor sum chart. And then plus 1. Now it's just like number 15. You're going to cut that in half, keeping the sign with a third term, and find the GCF. What's the GCF for the first group? A 2 and an x, right? Divide each term by that GCF. What do I have left? the first one, a 3x, and the second one, it's 2x divided by itself, 1, don't forget to put a plus 1. What's the GCF here? It is 1, and I want you to recognize that it's 1, because I want you to put a plus 1 out front, so that you can see why the answer is what it is, because this one has a highly missed answer as well. So when I divide each of these by 1, I still get 3x plus 1, don't I? So aren't these the same? So I'm going to pull that 3x plus 1 out in front of parentheses. And I'm going to take what's left over, the 2x and the plus 1, and throw it in the empty trash bin next door. That's your group and your garbage. And then that's your final answer. Again, I would recoil to double check. Yes? Uh, you get the 2 Here? Yeah. So, um, you understood where I got the 6 and the 1? Yeah. Okay. So then I just found the factors of 6. 1 and 6 and 2 and 3 are my only factors. I know I'm adding the factors because that product is positive. Right. And so the factors that add to give me my 5 would be the 2 and the 3. I know that my 5 is positive for the problem. The bigger of the two factors always carries the same sign as the middle term. And then so that means the 3 is positive. The 2 would have to be positive in order to create a positive 5. If the 2 were negative, we'd have a positive 1. So some of your teachers do not require you to put the signs in that factor sum chart. Uh, they're important. Because signs are a big problem. They'll kill you in free problem. Alright, so let's look at 18. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take my bookends. And again, I'm still looking to make sure that there's no GCF, and, and there's not in this case. So I'm going to take my bookends, 3 times 2, which, blink a dinkily, that's a real word, not, gives you another product of positive 6. But this time I'm looking for a middle term of negative 7. Are there any factors of 6 that add to give you 7? We did that over here, right? So 1 and 6 are what add to be 7. I know that the sign of my 7 is negative for the original problem. The bigger of the two factors keeps that negative sign, so 6 has to be negative. What does the 5 have to be? Positive or negative? Right, yeah, that's the 5. Yeah, that's right. What does the 1 have to be? It has to be negative. If the 1 were positive, you'd end up with a negative 5, and that's not correct. So again, I'm going to replace, rewrite this, for the x squared, but instead of this negative 7, I'm replacing it with a negative, you could put a 1x here, it makes you feel better, and a negative 6x, and then don't forget the last bookend, plus 2. Have you, have you what order these going? No, it's like kind of backtracking. So if one and the six, I mean, you're going to go through the negative one. Because um, I'm looking originally to see if I'm adding or subtracting for that product that I got because my product was positive. I know I'm adding. 
And so I ignored the signs at that point. I just know that one in six had to be the seven. So that's how I chose them in the first place. Well, yeah, I get that from you. And then I look to see what the sign is of that middle term. Because the sign of the middle term is negative, I always assign the bigger of these two that, that same sign. Because I always know the bigger of the two factors will carry the same sign as the middle term. So it's like the same thing if it's like the last one is positive, then the terms are the same sign. Right. If this term is positive, you'll start to, at, at some point, a lot of you start to recognize that if this is positive, although you have to watch if there's not something over here, because sometimes there is, but if the product is positive, these will be the same. If this is negative, these will be opposite signs. Yeah. But you're always rechecking here to see, okay, wait a minute. Typically, you only have to find the sign of the smaller factor, because you should always know the sign of the bigger factor, because it's the same as that middle one. So that's why I'm debating, is that positive? But yeah, you're right, if that last bookend is positive, it won't be the same. Alright, so we're going to cut this in half. That negative belongs to the 6x, so don't lose it. What is the GCF for the first group? In x, when you factor it out, divide each of those by an x, what do you have left? 3x minus 1 is correct. What's the GCF here? It is two, but we are going to factor out a negative because I want that third term to be positive. So we're going to factor out a negative two, so pay attention to your signs. I'm going to divide by a negative. So when I divide by that negative, I get a positive three x. If I hadn't divided by a negative, it would remain a negative three x, which you get one. A positive two divided by negative two is indeed a negative one. So now these are the same. So factor that three x minus one out in front of parentheses and just pick up the garbage that's left over, the x minus 2, and throw it into the empty, we'll just call it a recycle bin, and we're all happy. People come to my house, do you recycle? Sure, is it empty? It's a hole. Very, very good. We make that recycle bin so tiny. You must not want me to recycle that much. There's my thought on it on the whole subject. All right, uh, when Scott still wrote me a little nasty note about what I had in my recycle bin, that annoyed me. That's really what did it. You can blame Scott still for it. If they're gonna make money off of my recycling, don't write me a nasty note for putting a pizza box in my recycle bin. It could be dog food, so they should've been happy. What was that? No, there wasn't pizza in it, but apparently you cannot you know, recycle a pizza box because it had food. Apparently that's dirty. So if you can wash it, but you can't wash cardboard. So apparently the pizza box goes into regular garbage. But apparently if you live in a state like Washington State, they're really nasty about it. <laughs> and they'll like fine you. So I suppose I should consider myself lucky. Question on this? On number 20? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's look at 20. So you, so he multiplied his bookends, and this time it is negative 5, right? So were you adding or subtracting your factors? Ah, uh, and there you need to subtract. Because the product is negative, so now you're subtracting those factors. You want to take your bookends. Yeah, and 10 times 3 does give you 30, but it, it adds to be 13. It doesn't subtract. So I want to look to see what subtracts in 13. So, okay, 3 and 10 don't work. So that's a good point because that's another one like the 5 and the 6. Um, so I've got a choice of 2 and 15. Yeah. So really focus on whether you're adding or subtracting because otherwise your brain is going to go to that easier product because we're more familiar with 3 and 10 than we are with 2 and 15. So that's a good point. Yes. No, because if you use 10 and 3 and you made them negative, that 10 and the 3 are not going to give you um, the right, because 10 and 3, okay, so let's look at this. So if you did 3 and 10, they subtract to you 7. If you need a negative here, if you made both of these positive or negatives, then this is going to end up being a positive here. Does that make sense? Yeah. It, 
you're going to have something wrong when you recoil. So yes, you could have forced it to make a negative 13, but the problem is that that sign there is negative. Does that make sense? So back to what Ali was saying, if that's negative, then these need to be opposite signs. So your sign here ends up being a negative 15, but a positive 2. Now go meet your group of garbage. And anytime that third term is negative, pull out a negative as you GCF. So oftentimes, like on this, well, this one didn't have a choice. On this one, I probably would put the negative 15x as my second term, and my positive 2x as my third term, so I don't have to worry about factoring out a negative. You can put those in whatever order you want to. Okay, so you're going to finish that.